Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so let's check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're going to investigate a key performance evaluation metric for portfolio or fund performance, that is, tracking error and information ratio. Quite common there, you want to understand how your portfolio or your fund performs in relation to the benchmark and how well does this particular strategy reward you for deviating from market performance. And that's what tracking error and information ratio allow you to do. Tracking error is quite a neat measure of risk that measures the standard deviation of outperformance of your portfolio over the benchmark. So you can just calculate the differences in your portfolio of fund uh, returns from the benchmark returns and calculate their standard deviations, and then calculate the information ratio, which is an improvement or a generalization of the Sharpe ratio, where in the numerator you have got the difference of the portfolio return and the benchmark return, and in the denominator you have got the tracking error that we have discussed previously. And it's easy to see that this would be a generalization of the Sharpe ratio in the sense that here, instead of the risk-free rate, we can put any benchmark we want. Now, let's calculate the total returns of our three candidate funds that are BlackRock, Charles Schwab and Invesco, and see whether they deliver meaningful returns over the S&P 500 ETF. And that's quite a useful question to ask if you are a retail investor and considering different ETFs, whether historically those were decidedly outperforming the market index, whether they add value. And we'll also discuss how well does the tracking error and information ratio reveal the nature of these funds and how do those funds managers deliver additional returns to their shareholders. So first of all, we have got our daily total return indices from year-end 2015 until end of July 2021, so quite recent data. And let's calculate daily total returns and proceed from there. And again, we can calculate daily total returns by just dividing the total return index today by the total return index yesterday and subtracting one. And we can drag it across all four return series and bottom line click it all the way down across the whole sample. Now we can calculate daily outperformances of each of our three candidate funds over the S&P 500 by just subtracting the S&P 500 return, locking the column over here as we don't want it to change as we drag it across and calculate those for all three of our funds. Now we can calculate our annualized returns for the benchmark and three funds. Those could be portfolios as well or some simulated strategy returns, it doesn't really matter. And for annualized returns, we need to figure out how many observations we have got over there. And if we look at any of our return series, we can see that we've got exactly 1400 observations. And that means that to calculate annualized return, we can use the product one plus function referring to the whole array of daily returns and raising it to the power of 252 over 1400. And that assumes that there are 252 trading days in a year, a very common assumption in quantitative finance, and we bring it to that particular frequency. That would allow us to annualize returns and consider the ratios at an annual frequency, which is the most common frequency where you calculate your shops, your trainers, and as well your tracking errors and your information ratios. So let's just enforce this formula using shift control enter and drag it across for all four return series. And we can see that uh, already two of our three funds do outperform the S&P 500 quite decidedly, whereas Charles Schwab does lag behind a little bit. And now we can calculate our performances by subtracting the uh, S&P 500 annualized return from fund annual return, locking the column as well. We can see that BlackRock delivers uh, an outperformance of 4% per annum, uh, Invesco delivers an outperformance of uh, almost 8% per annum, which is really impressive, whereas Charles Schwab lags behind by about 2%. Now we can calculate our tracking error, and that's exactly why we calculated daily outperformances, because now we can just apply the stdv.s sample standard deviation function onto the array of daily outperformances, and to annualize that, 
to calculate annual tracking error and annual information ratio, we can multiply it by the square root of 252. Again, scaling any risk measure, any standard deviation measure, any volatility to annual frequency from daily frequency requires you to multiply by the square root of the number of training days in a year, assumed to be 252 yet again. And here we see that the tracking error of BlackRock uh, on annual terms is 17%, meaning that the volatility of outperformance uh, in annual terms is 17%. That's the deviation that you would expect from the market index when investing in BlackRock. And we can compare it to tracking errors of other funds. We can see that Invesco deviates from market performance the least, whereas it delivers the greatest outperformance, which already uh, does single out Invesco as the best candidate fund out of the three investigated, whereas the Charles Schwab performance is quite poor. It does not deliver uh, excess returns over the benchmark while deviating from it quite a lot by 26% per annum. Now to integrate the outperformance of uh, annual returns uh, and the deviation of daily returns from the benchmark returns, we can calculate the information ratio that's just the uh, outperformance divided by the respective tracking error. And obviously you can calculate your daily information ratio, monthly information ratio, annual is just the most common. Just make sure that your return measures and your risk measures are both on the same frequency so that your calculations are consistent. And we can see that BlackRock uh, has an information ratio of about 0 0.25, the information ratio of Charles Schwab is negative, and the information ratio of Invesco is approximately 0 0.9. Here, the rule of thumb is that, again, you're looking for positive information ratios, that goes without saying, but in terms of their magnitude, if the information ratio is in excess of 0 0.5, you're looking at a very successful fund or a portfolio. And you can see that Invesco does deliver in this regard, while BlackRock does provide decent performance, but nothing really special. So here we can say, we can conclude that as per the information ratio, Invesco is indeed the best ETF uh, in terms of historical performance if we judge it by the information ratio. However, information ratio has some uh, limitations, uh, mostly in terms of leverage and uh, market risk exposure. Obviously, you could outperform the benchmark, whereas not deviating from it much, by simply over leveraging yourself. You can be a so called closed at indexer. It means that you would just invest in a broad market index, but take on some leverage that would lead to higher expected returns in the long run at least, and could propel your information ratio into the positive territory without your fund manager generating any alpha. And for that, you need to always consult information ratio in context with other uh, portfolio evaluation techniques, such as the Sharpe ratio, such as Jensen's alpha, that we have already covered in the previous videos, or the appraisal ratio, a measure that we'll cover in the videos to come. And that's all there is for tracking error, information ratio, their applicability, and limitations. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make to see any further suggestions in videos for business, finance, or economics topics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.